Good afternoon. I'm Kim Anderson. I'm on the board of Missoula Community Access Television, and I'm also the Director of Programs and Grants for Humanities Montana. And welcome to Missoula Live. As you can see, I'm all alone here. Joel is off on a fabulous wedding extravaganza, a family event uh, on the East Coast, and he actually believed that Scott and I could do this show on our own without him. And we'll find out. I have no idea. So anyway, here we go. We have some wonderful organization representatives with us today who are going to talk about things that are coming up. Today is Monday, April 16th. This show will run for two weeks. And so uh, you may be seeing us at any point in the next two weeks. Uh, and we'll try to keep repeating dates of events so that you can uh, pay attention to that. But before we go to our first guest, I do want to remind everybody that uh, we still have, uh, through the end of May, so a month and a half at least, of Saturday animation drop-in workshops for uh, kids ages, oh, what do we say, Scott, ages like 10 to 9, 10 and up. Um, you can bring the kids between one and four. They show up, it's $10 um, here at MCAT, and they get training on how to do stop motion animation, which is a fascinating process, and uh, a great skill for kids to pick up. They can do it using Legos or clay animation. Um, so you, can, you don't have to call ahead, you don't have to make appointments, you just show up with your kid, drop them off, and uh, they have a blast for four hours. So that will be going on through the end of May, as I said, every Saturday. Um, also, it is not too soon, if you have children, to be thinking about summer camp. Believe me, it's really not too soon. You want to get that locked down. So the MCAT summer camps are a great opportunity for kids of all ages. There are teen camps, there are younger middle school age and, and even younger than that camps. I don't have all the information on the tips of my fingers, but if you go to our website, which Scott is showing right there, uh, you'll get all the information you need on that. And one final point, and this is moving away from MCAT business, moving to Humanities Montana business. Friday, April 20th is a grant deadline at Humanities Montana. We fund humanities-based programs around the state. So if you have a public project, that involves history, literature, philosophy, environmental studies, jurisprudence, um, current events, uh, you might check our website and look at our grant guidelines. There it is. Look at our grant guidelines. There's not a lot of time left, but if you're uh, a good grant writer, you can hit us up. And if you have any questions about that, call me Kim Anderson at Humanities Montana. Okay, that's the end of that business, and now I'm very happy to welcome our first guest, Jacqueline Snow from Spark. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Kim. How are you? Great. Thanks for being here. Um, you've got kind of an exciting public event going on uh, coming up in another few weeks. Is that right? We do. On May 4th, the Spark Showcase. It's going to be a little bit of everything we do throughout the school year. We're in the schools all year long, bringing in arts opportunities for kids. And really, we're a community-based organization. We're a collective impact, and we work with the schools. We work with all sorts of artists in the community and arts organizations. So it just makes sense to bring the community together and celebrate and give everyone an opportunity to see what's happening in the schools for themselves and, and to do it. It's, it's more than just sitting and watching. It's getting involved and right. trying out the art. Yeah. So on May 4th, which is the first Friday, mm -hmm. right, you guys are taking over the Wilma. Is that right? We are. We are. Um, Log Jam Presents and the Chakotas are amazing and yes, they, they, are. they do it so much for the community. And one of the things they're doing for us is opening up the Wilma for us to showcase what we do that night. So yes, it'll be, it'll start at 515 and run through about 730. Um, the first the first hour or so will be hands-on interactive experiences where families can go around and they can try out a theater activity, create a costume, play with shadow puppets. 
They can do some hands-on visual arts, make some make some things to take home. Um, um, there will be a movement activity. There will be um, musical instruments that they can play with, live music playing, and lots of things to do that way. And then after that, there will be some stage performances and. You know, what we do isn't really for performance, it's for the process of learning. Mm -hmm. but, um, but so it'll be more of an opportunity for parents in the community to see what's happening within the classroom and to try it out for themselves. So I think that sometimes as adults, we um, don't take the time to, to do art like we should and it's remember true. how soul, soul filling and energizing that can be. And so, um, you can you can sit and watch, but even more excitingly, you can um, jump up on the dance floor and try some African dance and be, be taught by students and see what they've learned in classroom and what they've learned about world cultures through that. Um, you can hear some stories that students have written themselves through some storytelling experiences. Oh. Uh, there's going to be some historical rap being performed and like in the style of Hamilton kids connecting oh uh, connecting their history yeah. learning experience with rap oh that's yeah it. So i was thinking rap is already so old there's historical rap <laughs> i'm so glad you cleared that up you know yeah so they're connecting their american <laughs> history and, and some of it some of it's actually other types of music as well mm -hmm. but they're they're um they're covering some other songs with some with some historical knowledge that they've learned and putting it to art and i bet they'll never forget Absolutely. Those hey, things, I'll remember I just, that song forever. <laughs> be, before I went, came over here to, to the show, I checked on the Pulitzer Prize winners were announced today, and Kendrick Lamar won a Pulitzer Prize. Oh, great. So rap is as legit as Beethoven mm. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It um, is. So, uh, it, you know, Joel and I have talked about this a lot over the years, that for some reason, many of us as adults just stop creating and, and and enjoying creative arts as a participant rather mm -hmm. than an audience member um, and how good it feels to sing or to move or to try your hand at the plastic arts I mean it's um, it's it brings such joy so this is an opportunity not just for kids but mm -hmm. adults as well yeah everyone everyone can jump in and and participate and and I agree it's it's kind of sad that we let those things yeah. go and I see even with even with students the older they get the the more self-conscious they become right. and so I think what we're doing with keeping the arts in the schools and and having more exposure to the arts in schools I'm really hoping will will help our kids here in Missoula to not lose that that sense of imagination and creativity and being willing to take those positive risks because it is it's like a it's part of being human to right. express yourself through the arts and and um, sometimes people become more worried about yeah. how it's going to look or whatever because, but it's... yeah part of creating is is becoming very vulnerable mm -hmm. so now for people who don't know we kind of just jumped in because this event is so <laughs> exciting um, but for people who aren't familiar with spark and uh, its history can you give us a little background Sure. So five years ago, um, Missoula was a, was accepted as an Any Given Child community okay. through the Ensuring the Arts for Any Given Child initiative through the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. I know, it's all those big fancy so, words. So, yeah. So we were, um, I think we were the 17th community to be accepted into this initiative. And there are 25 now communities throughout the nation doing this, and we're actually participating in a in a study of the impact of right. of the initiative um, this year. And so, a lot of exciting things happening throughout the nation. But um, in Missoula, what that means is that looking at looking at arts that were offered and realizing that arts are really an essential part of education that um, we decided that we needed to come together as a community and create more arts opportunities, really consistent and continual quality arts opportunities for kids. And so we work together with um, businesses who help support us, with um, the school district, the Missoula County Public Schools, and with many arts organizations and individual artists in the community to bring these opportunities to kids. That's right. So it's like a, it's a huge cooperative effort. It's not yeah. like you run Spark and you work with the school district and that's 
that's it. Oh, I yeah. Mean, there's, there's so much going on yeah. and so many moving parts. And um, my job is to sort of coordinate and make sure everything is going together right. as the director. But really, there are so many people that make this happen and that so many people that really care about kids having these arts opportunities. So, so it's a pretty amazing thing. And I'm always impressed with how much people are willing to do to create these opportunities for kids. And, right. and so just an example of what we do throughout the school year so people can know how it actually right. works is um, we support arts in three tiers. We support art for art's sake, and so we always um, are supportive of more arts teachers being hired and kids taking those classes and doing art for art's sake mm -hmm. and supporting those organizations that do that. Um, we also do arts enhancement, which is Every year, every student right now, K through eight, and we're trying to get high school to have these experiences too. Okay. But they get to go to some sort of special professional arts event. Um, so right now, the Drum Brothers are going to all first grade classrooms oh, okay. and doing an hour long experience with singing and drumming and dancing. Um, with kids so they all get that and then second grade goes to Missoula Children's Theater and sees it sees a play there third grade has a dance experience and and then some of those things that had happened for years and years like the fifth grade like art. The, the fifth grade art museum right. and the fourth grade symphony those things are are continued and and they're working together with us to make sure that now we can build it all the way through so that K through 12 um, eventually, right now we have K through eight, but eventually mm -hmm. they'll all get those memorable experiences, those those special things where they get to see professional art. Um, but our the main thrust of our programming and the the part that really um, is the the focus that takes the most of our time and attention mm -hmm. is arts integration, and so that is um, learning art skills and arts understandings in combination with other content areas. Mm -hmm. So um, this week we've got a we've got a ton of things going on in April, and so we've got a theater artist teaching fractions in a math class, and they collaborate with the classroom teachers. So the teaching team will select an art form and an artist, and they'll decide the content that they're teaching in their classroom already that they want to bring in another way to engage the mm -hmm. students and another way for the students to learn this. And they'll contact the artists and they work together to come up with this. Um, we've also got um, first graders learning um, habitats through animal habitats and science through um, theater arts as well. We've got visual arts talking about the international baccalaureate. Um, how, how you know yourself, self-identity types oh, of wow. things with visual arts in some schools. We've got um, dance with language arts, learning parts of speech through dance. There are, there are so many different things going on, but, but it's just it's connected to how the brain works, the novelty and, and um, problem solving and creative thinking and innovation and all of those things come it's into play. It's such a huge leap forward from, um, I mean, certainly from when I was raising my <laughs> kids and or when I was raised in, in this community. So I, I just think it's so exciting. And anyone who wants to get a taste of what is going on through the exciting SPARK program in Missoula schools uh, should come uh, Friday, May 4th. Yes. Beginning at 5.30? 5.15. 5.15 at the Wilma. You'll get a little smorgasbord of just some of the many, many yeah. activities that are going on. It must be a huge... Uh, coordinating uh, just with this event on must take a ton of work between all the different. <laughs> it does. Kids it does. And yeah, and getting all the the teachers and the kids yeah. coordinated and permission. Now, one forms. question I have: Can people? Is it? Do you have to stay for the whole two plus hours, or can people? Pop people in and can out? come and go. That's just fine. Because first Friday is a little chaotic. Yeah, usually. there's a, there's a lot yeah. going on on that Friday night, right. so so you can definitely stop in and see what's happening. And the event is free. Everyone is right. welcome to just At come the in. Wilma. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be, be it's gonna be so time. much fun, and um, there will also be some raffles, so oh, good. Um, there are free summer camps and arts being raffled off, and as wow. you were saying, it's the time to start figuring that That's out. That's right. And That's also right. some other arts opportunities, and if you go to our Facebook page and like and share the event, there's, oh. there's um, an art camp being auctioned, being given away 
to someone who likes and shares our oh, Facebook Oh, excellent. Events, so, so you can get something free even before yeah. you show up. Help There's us get the word out. That's a good idea. I'll do that when I get to the office tomorrow. And who knows, by May 4th, it might actually be spring outside. I hope so. It, it's possible, I suppose. It's called the spring showcase. Yeah. So. <laughs> Let's hope that it won't really be that snow. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck, Jacqueline. This sounds like such a fun time. Thanks for coming and telling Thank us about so it. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. I think Scott's going to show a public service announcement. My what are you reporting? My daughter, she just lying on the floor. What's your address? Every year, more than 70,000 American kids are admitted to the emergency room because of accidental ingestion of prescription drugs. Is she breathing? Safeguard your home. Safeguard so your prescriptions. How old is she? Keep your How prescriptions locked up and away from your kids. Is someone coming? Okay, I'm going to get you help, okay? Proper use, proper storage, so proper disposal. Help will be there soon. Choices matter, Missoula. Sergeant Greg Amison with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike-friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. Missoula Community Access Television works with kids in an active learning environment where they get hands-on experience in video production. MCAT offers weekly Saturday classes that spark creativity in kids from 9 to 13 years of age. Located downtown at 500 North Higgins. MCAT Saturday Drop-Ins. Create your story. Hi, welcome back. I'm here with Heather Sundheen. Did I say that right? No! <laughs> I'm here with Heather. And Heather is with Living Art of Montana or Missoula? Montana. Montana. Living Art of Montana. They have an event that uh, has been hugely successful over the years. So Heather, first tell us your last name. <laughs> Then tell us about the event you have coming up. Yes, so my last name is Sundheim. Sundheim. Yes. I said Sundheim. It's okay. I okay. answer to Sundheim. anything. Sundheim. Yeah. Um, the hmm. event is the Light Show. It's our 14th annual Light wow. Show. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And we're moving it to the Wilma Theater this year on Ooh. May 19th. That's going to be so much fun. We're oh, very wow. Excited. Yeah. So, 14 years of this event, I have been many times. Every time it is something just Totally, it just blows me away Aww. all the time. But can you describe for people who haven't been to a light show what it's like? Yes. So it's sort of your typical banquet auction with a twist. Mm -hmm. um, we like to have a performance every year. The lamp lady is sort of the official mascot right. for the light show. She does wear a lampshade on her head. We don't disclose her identity. It's very hush hush. It's like who's the singer? Sia. Yes. It's exactly <laughs> like, Sia. It's like Sia. If you yes. know Sia in similar shape as well. But she was before yeah. Sia. She was fourteen years before. Uh -huh. So really, yeah. But um, really, the purpose is to highlight the need for funding for our free workshops, which we offer for people who are struggling with cancer, chronic illness, and grief. Mm -hmm. And so local artists in our community donate works of art that they create around the theme of light and what that means to them, whether it's spreading light outward into the community for healing or just knowledge or compassion, whatever that means to them, they create those pieces and we auction them off on the night while eating and having a performance. Right, Yeah. right. So this year you're going to be at the Wilma. Mm -hmm. Um, which is just such a great space. Yeah. It's just, it feels very glamorous mm -hmm. and uh, it's a wonderful venue. And what's the performance part of this year's? Well, event? it's a secret. It's always a big secret, but it's toward the beginning of the night. And this year I can say, without giving anything away, there's going to be more Lamp Lady. You've heard of more Cowbell. We uh -huh. hear the same thing more every cowbell. year. Yes. There's just not enough of the Lamp Lady. There's so never she's going to show lady. up in some creative ways on the night. Yeah. But it's different every year, so we try to mix it up. And the event also includes a uh, dinner? It does. 
Um, and what's the ticket price and how can people get tickets? So technically we are sold out, which is a lovely <gasps> wow. problem to have. Yeah. It's never happened in the history of Living Art. That's amazing. That said, we have some seats in reserve um, for some folks who may or may not be able to come depending. And so I would encourage people just to give us a call and get on the wait list because we've already yeah. been able to fit some folks and we want to get everybody there who has a desire to be there. So Wow, well congratulations. Yeah. I mean that's just a real testament to how popular this event has become in the community. And 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 beyond that, how um, important living art is in Missoula. Can you talk a little bit about the organization and what this fundraiser supports? Yeah, so it was started 24 years ago, 25 next year, um, by a group of four professional women who were artists and um, therapists had a variety of degrees and they were walking a friend through cancer and her diagnosis was terminal and they started writing poetry together and creating art together and going outside together and through that process it was so meaningful to her as she struggled through her illness and to them as they watched her struggle mm -hmm. and they thought why don't we develop a curriculum where we could repeat this for other people so that they could right. have this meaningful end of life or not. Some people survive and live many years. We've got people who've been coming for 10 plus years and they're doing great and they're post yeah. illness and but they understand <clears throat> what that's like and they also have things that re-trigger them and so to be part of a community where they can help others who are going through it at the moment or just be anonymous and make some art and not think about why they're there. Right. They have that option as well. Sure. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, beyond the physical aspects of dealing with life-threatening uh, illnesses or chronic illnesses, yeah. um, it, emotions are, you are often very close to the surface. Yeah. And all sorts of emotions. Oh, yeah. And you have people who, you know, they've survived. And so friends and family after a while, it's like, oh, do you, you know, can let exhale right. and move on. Right, that's over, it's that's over. done. But it's yeah. not over for that person. Right. It, you know, it changes them in ways that they can't anticipate until yeah. it happens. And so a lot of people talk about how, you know, they leave medical treatment and you're in treatment and you have a plan and then the doctor lets go of the string of balloons and you're just untethered. Right. And living art is a tether for them. It's, it's loose enough that they don't feel they have to come, but they know they can and they know they'll be understood and that they're with other people who get it and mm -hmm. won't think it's strange that they're 10 years out and still struggling with this emotion or this sure. physical constraint. And so it's really about the community and the creative process even more than the piece of art that they walk away with, though they leave, do leave with some pretty cool with stuff. With some amazing <laughs> art, yes. Yeah. So Living Art, a nonprofit based here in Missoula. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, has Scott, have you showed the website? Have we seen the website yet? Um, there we are. Gail, you had it up before. <laughs> um, so information about the organization and all the different things that you yep. offer is available there, yep. uh, as well as contact information so you can call and beg to be put mm -hmm. on the reserve list Definitely. for um, for the light show. Yes. And that is May 19th. It is. Which is a, is that a Friday? It's a Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. At the Wilma, which mm -hmm. will be huge fun, right in the middle of downtown, easy to get to. Um, and it starts what time? It starts at 5.30. 5.30. Yep. And this is your big fundraiser of the year, isn't it? It really is, yeah. So it's it's a great organization. It's really important to support. And beyond anything, it's just a really fun event. Yeah. So if you're watching now and you forgot to get your tickets, I hope that they will take pity on yes, you. Yes, give us a call. <laughs> Call Heather and just yeah. beg, yes. just beg her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything we forgot to mention? No, um, you can also just look us up on Facebook for our workshop schedule if that's something that draws oh, you or someone you know, um, or give us a call and we'll connect you. Yeah. All right, thanks for coming to talk yeah. about the Thank light you. show and your organization. Thanks a lot. All right, we will be back. We'll have a sh another short PSA, and then I believe oh, we're going to talk about one of my other favorite things, the book sale with AAUW. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs>
Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> um, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> <laughs> Ranchers are the stewards of Montana's great grasslands and wetlands. Ducks Unlimited works with ranchers on conservation programs to improve cattle production and wildlife habitat. Montana is the nation's third largest waterfowl producer. Ducks Unlimited promotes working lands programs that help keep ranchers on the land while improving habitat for wildlife and Montana's outdoors people. To learn more about conservation in Ducks Unlimited, visit www.ducks.org Montana. <laughs> So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, mm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> I just look at me, but yes. yeah, I think okay. yes. Hi, we're back. <laughs> While well, I'm pointing all over the place, um, I am happy to welcome three lovely women from the AAUW Book Sale. This is an annual event that we look forward to every year. We have Nancy, Ann, and Jan, and the book sale is coming up, right? Tell us when, tell us where. The sale is out at Orchard Homes Country Life Club which is on 3rd. Mm -hmm. It's just past the big Reserve Street intersection right. on the left. Easy to find, but that's where we've had the sale for a right. number of years yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the dates that, you, that you're going to be open for business? The sale starts on Thursday, April 19th. 19th. Coming right Thank up you. there, yeah. <laughs> the 19th. <laughs> and uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then the sale continues on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. So starting this Thursday, April 19th, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then running Friday the 20th, uh, Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 2. And Sunday is usually your kind of bag sale yes. bargain day, right? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, let's back up a, a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, Friday, 10 to 5. Yes. Saturday, 10, 10 to, to 5. 5. Saturday, 10 to 2. Sunday, 10 to 2. Or, I'm sorry, Sunday, yeah. 10 to 2. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yes, on Sunday, you don't want to take that stuff back, right? So mm -hmm. what happens? <laughs> well, we end up with a, a, a bag sale on Sunday, and that's very right. popular. $10 for as much as you can fit in a bag, right. like a shopping bag right. or grocery sack. Most people bring their own bags, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this has been going on for how many years, Anne? Over 50. Wow. Okay, so even more than I've been going, because I feel like I've been going forever. Um, well, none and, of us were involved that long ago. No. <laughs> Of course not, that would we, be impossible. We, we could have. <laughs> and if people haven't been there before, you have no idea how many books are involved in this sale. Do you have a, a general number of thousands, how many books? Thousands. I mean, yeah. clearly mm -hmm. thousands. Mm -hmm. And is it still by the inch? We mm -hmm. price them by the inch. We stack them up and mm -hmm. we measure them, and it's a dollar and a half an inch, except for the special the special books. Right. We have a really wonderful collection this year of Western books. There are a lot of Custer in, uh, books, oh, wow. um, Lewis and Clark, um, 
rare pioneer history books, and we have several signed local and Western authors, probably 40 boxes full wow. of those. And those are special priced anywhere from $4 to $84, depending yeah. upon, uh, the on rareness what they are. And yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, the tables are all spread out in different genres. I mean, there's, you've got your fiction, you've got history, you've got political science, biography, cooking. Mm -hmm. It's just heaven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Someone like me. <laughs> um, so everyone should go and, and stock up on all their favorite books. Can you can you explain to us what this is a fundraiser for? Because this is your big event of the year, yes. really, to raise money. Yes. Yeah. And and what do those funds go for? We raise money for scholarships at the university, as well as other educational projects and programs. Um, one of the things that AAUW uh, provided money for a couple of years ago was through this book sale, was the Women's History Mural in the capital. Oh, yeah. Yes. Humanities mm -hmm. Montana funded a little bit of mm -hmm. that as well. It was a great project mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. And PDK gives scholarships as well. And can you explain the two organizations, AAUW and PDK? PDK is Phi Delta Kappa. Right. It's a uh, educational fraternity, mm -hmm. but uh, originally it was men. Only, but now it's <laughs> <laughs> those days are gone <laughs> for everyone. Um, but um, the themes of uh, Phi Delta Kappa are service, leadership, and research. And it, it turns out that PDK and AAUW share many of the same goals. So it's a natural for us to work together on this project, and. Um, Ultimately, many of our members belong to both groups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, so, yeah. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> AAUW is the American Association of University Women. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be a member, you just either have to be supportive of our goals, which are education and equity of women and girls, or and or um, have a bachelor's or associate or higher degree mm -hmm. from a from a college or university. Right. And I mean this a sale of this magnitude must take countless volunteers and hours uh, to put together. When do you start working on it? Started today, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's <laughs> always <laughs> this morning we we decided to get some books together. Plotting and planning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they plan a long for time. time. And, uh, you know, it's, we keep working during the year towards the goals that we have. And then, uh, you know, early in the, in the new year, we, we begin to meet regularly to, uh -huh. to go over all the details. But uh, the one thing I, I would like to point out today is that the reason we have such a wonderful collection of books is because of the wonderful books people in our community donate. Right. And the mm -hmm. donated mm -hmm. books are amazing. All kinds of books. Amazing books. So we were very grateful for the donations. And then the other part that is uh, community-based is we get lots of volunteer workers for the sale. And it takes uh, a lot of people. It takes a lot. And many of the same people come back year yeah, after year I see because they have faces. a good time. Yes. They enjoy yes. it. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. yes. So today in this lineup, I represent uh, Phi Delta Kappa. Anne represents American Association University Women. And I'm and president Jan. of retired teachers for Western She's, Montana. Oh, this yes. is a whole other. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and, and, we and, support she, them. Yeah. and yes. she, Jan represents uh, many of our volunteers. So mm -hmm. that's why we wanted Great. to have Our teachers love that. to work the book sales. Mm -hmm. First of all, you get first crack at the good well, books, right? Well, we did right? get to see <laughs> <what's there. laughs> I'm going to start yeah, Marvelous <laughs> children's <laughs> books, you know, should we? We brought a few yeah, books. Show us like, yeah. Yes, we've got an array of books. Um, beautiful children's books of all kinds. And then, of course, this was from the science table. We have all kinds of manuals and 
science books. I don't know and then you I have. have. I have several uh, Montana authors. Oh, these are some of my friends. Deirdre. Dee, yeah. 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 And, and Doug. Doug. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Oh. We have a wonderful collection of, of uh, Montana authors. I brought a great novel. It is a great I've novel. I've read this recently. A wonderful novel, All the Light We Cannot See. But this represents two tables and more worth of books of this type fiction. quality. <gasps> Hardback, brand new. They're wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then I brought um, this classic drawing oh, book yeah. drawing that didn't on the right work side of the <laughs> brain. Oh, Probably it's, it's a wonderful guide. Would. And then I could not resist picking up this. It's all about origami. Oh, how cool. You know, for kids and or for adults. Wonderful. Folding so, art treasures yeah. that you can create. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really indicative of the kind of the quality and the variety of books that you'll find at this sale. It's not just you know moldy old paperbacks that someone has mm -hmm. yes. dragged out of they're their basement. Very in it's, good shape. Yeah, and they're all sorted by table right. type. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you know what you're interested uh -huh. in when you arrive, we can show you to the table right. <laughs> where those books will be found. <laughs> So again, I want to make sure everyone has the dates. This is the 2018 AAUWPDK Used Book Sale. It begins on Thursday, April 19th at 10 a.m. and it runs to 7 p.m. on Thursday. It runs Friday, April 20th from 10 to 5, Saturday, April 21st from 10 to 5, and Sunday, April 22nd is the bag sale, half price or something ten dollars a bag ten dollars a bag even better than that and that's from ten to two and uh, all this goes off at the Orchard Homes Clubhouse which is on third just past reserve now can people know today was the deadline for dropping off books wasn't it today tomorrow. and tomorrow oh and tomorrow yes. so if I have some I actually have some books can I bring them over tomorrow yes yes you may. okay good someone will be yeah, there yes. if you have book, I mean my, my house is getting um, scary a little bit with the books, but um, but I've got some that I just don't need to keep. Most of them I want to keep, but some I don't. And it's not that they're not good. It's just um, I won't reread them, and someone else should right. read them. So if you're like me and in that situation, drag them over to AAUW's book sale at Orchard Homes um, Clubhouse today or tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. Anything else we forgot? Can we think of anything else? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun time. I'm sure you're going to be very, very busy. And yes. thanks for doing mm -hmm. it again. Yes. Well, yeah. we, we really enjoy doing this. Yes. I mean, this is all about the love of books. It's about yeah. reading. It's about encouraging literacy and reading. And uh, that's why we enjoy it. Yeah, it's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. All right, when we come back, we have um, some final guests who will talk to us about April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And uh, before that, we'll have a PSA, right, Scott? Your local library, igniting the passion for reading. How would you like to have an endless supply of books, movies, music, audiobooks, and even ebooks whenever you want? Your library card can do all that, and it doesn't cost a thing. You can pick up a library card anytime the library is open, free of charge to residents. All you need is a picture ID with your current address. The library will then verify your address, and once they have, your library card will be good for life. Library card holders may borrow several items to enjoy all at once. Be sure to check the return dates as they may vary depending on what items you check out. It's so easy to get access to all the library has to offer, and best of all, it's free. To learn more, stop by your local library or visit their website. This message brought to you by the Greater Montana Foundation and the Montana State Library.
Welcome, my friends, to Missoula Community Access Television, MCAT. And here, every Saturday afternoon, we're having a drop-in animation camp. And where you can do such wonderful things as do animating things of great all endeavors, like make Legos come to life. Or like this! <laughs> Just do that! It'll be amazing! Here, at MCAT, 500 North Higgins, Suite 105, every Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. <laughs> Here we are. We are back. And I am sitting with Brenna Merrill and Leah Fitch, who are both here with Make Your Move, which is a coalition involving a few different nonprofits in Missoula. And I'm going to turn it over to you to let you explain how that works. Yeah. So Make Your Move was founded in 2012 as a community um, attempt to help prevent sexual violence here in Missoula. Right now, that council consists of uh, the Missoula Forum for Children and Youth, Relationship Violence Services with Missoula City County, uh, the Student Advocacy Resource Center at the University of Montana, and the YWCA Missoula. Amazing. And Leah, you are also, for just a, a brief moment, going to wear your Missoula Forum for Children and Youth hat, right? Yes. And tell us, Brandy Tyree from the Forum was supposed to be here today and couldn't be, mm -hmm. but there's uh, an event going on that she wanted to make sure we knew about, and we thought we'd put that on you, since you know more about it than I do. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So I'm, I have two hats today. Yes. Um, but uh, we are going to be having a prescription drug take back yes. on April 28th, so that's Saturday, April 28th, and it'll be at the Southgate Mall. Um, and basically we want people to bring in all of their unused or expired medications because if you keep them at home, then there's a higher chance that if you have kids that they could get into them. Um, pets also, you want to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then just in general, just it's a lot safer to, to get those out of your house. So um, just make sure to bring um, uh, all of your expired or unused medications. No um, s syringes or um, like pressurized like inhalants uh, are, or liquids are, so are going pills. to be taken. So yeah, just pills. pills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is at Southgate Mall on mm -hmm. April 28th, just during general operating hours. I yeah, assume. yeah, and, and you should go to the clock <coughs> tower, which is where we'll be. So. Oh, great, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we've talked about this over the years. It's, you know, it's just a really bad idea to keep old medications in your medicine mm -hmm. cabinet mm -hmm. or in your bedside drawer or wherever they are. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's no use for them anymore and they can be a danger for others, for you, for your animals, like you yeah. said. So the responsible mm -hmm. thing to do is just to turn them in and that happens on April 28th. Okay. All right, so going back to Make Your Move, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, is that correct? It sure is. <laughs> So make us more aware right now. <laughs> well, I, what a task. So, yeah. you know, here in Missoula, I think we are all pretty aware that sexual violence happens. Um, and this month is a, a national month where agencies across the country are trying to help educate folks on what sexual violence is and what it looks like. Um, national statistics say that one in three women and one in four men will experience sexual violence at least once in their lifetime. Isn't that an amazing statistic? It is far too many. Yeah. 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 And then if we think about what that would mean for Missoula County, it means that we could fill the stands in the Adams Center, the Gri Washington Grizzly Stadium, and the Kettle House Amphitheater. So wow. if you think of how many people that affects, um, it's very clearly an important issue. Absolutely. And I think probably a lot of people like me aren't uh, totally aware of the kinds of victim services that are available, the, the places that people can go for help. And so um, this coalition of, of organizations is probably great for awareness building in that. 
Yeah, of course. And and um, the coalition, the Make Your Move Council, is uh, created through victim service agencies and prevention workers. Um, there are quite a number of victim service providers here in town. Mm -hmm. The YWCA offers support services to general community members who are experiencing intimate partner violence or sexual assault. Uh, First Step provides forensic exams for those who have been sexually assaulted. The Student Advocacy Resource Center over at the university provides those same services uh, to students mm -hmm. confidential confidentially. Um, and then Missoula City County Relationship Violence Services uh, provides advocates for folks who are victims of crime and going through the court system. Wow. So if you, if, if you were a victim of um, some sort of uh, sexual assault, mm -hmm. um, well, I, I mean, in, in many cases, your first response would be to call 911 probably. But if it wasn't an immediate uh, situation, mm -hmm. then where would you suggest people go like online as their first step? As their first place to go? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, people who experience um, sexual violence, sometimes they are immediately ready to take action and right. sometimes it takes years. Exactly. When you're looking for resources, uh, you can certainly visit our, webs our website, makeyourmovemissoula.org. Uh, there is a tab that has resources that includes Perfect. a list of all the agencies here in Missoula. You can also call the YWCA crisis line, which is 542-1944. Okay, and Scott has the website up on the screen so people can see. But that's just, I think it's just really helpful mm -hmm. to know. When, you know, if you work up your courage and you're sitting in your own home, the first site to go mm -hmm. to. Uh, to start investigating how to get more help. Yeah. Right. So that's terrific. And you wouldn't necessarily know that you needed to know that. I mean, like, right. until you need that service, you don't, like, you, you wouldn't know, oh, there's this crisis line. Yeah, you it's call. not in your phone book or mm -hmm. in your, you know, yeah. I mean, it's not something you think about, unfortunately, until you have to think about mm -hmm. it in many cases. Now, Make Your Move is also launching a kind of new consent campaign. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Yeah, so we received funding about a year and a half ago from um, a grant funder called Reliance, and we were one of 27 programs across the country wow. to be awarded these funds. That's impressive. Yeah, really awesome. Um, and so with that money, uh, we helped develop two initiatives. One was a bartender bystander intervention training, and then the other was a consent education campaign. And the consent education campaign has seven different posters, uh, one audio ad that will play before like R-rated movies in the cinema, mm -hmm. and uh, two audio ads that are starting to appear on the radio around town. Um, and this campaign is really focused on um, talking about consent as a positive thing and making sure that when we ask for consent, we're being very clear, explicit. Scott is showing some of consent. these, and I've seen some of them, and they're really, they're very clever, first mm -hmm. of all. I mean, they make you, they make you smile or laugh in many cases, and then they make you think about them. Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. And that's what we want. We want people to not feel like, oh my gosh, we're talking about you know, rape right now. Right. We want people to be like, oh yeah, consent. Like that is a fun thing. That's an, a good thing that we want to be doing. Um, I mean, I think that's one of the most important points about the humor aspect of the campaign is that um, you hear a lot of talk about, you know, all of this, these new concerns about consent takes all the spontaneity and fun out of interacting with mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. And of course that's not true. Um, it's just it's just a new way of moving forward that can be very fun and that's what I think mm -hmm. these ads mind-blowing consent is very funny I think it's it's a great great deal yeah I think I think partners creative that the people that helped us with that, oh, was that did, who did, it? did such yeah. an amazing job in terms of 
of making it, you know, um, relatable and funny. And, and what we found, like, so our, we, we tend to want to um, try to reach people that are between the ages of 18 and, and 34. 34. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how do we, how do we reach people like that? And, and generally, we found that people respond more to humor as opposed to just being, like, feeling lectured to, basically. Right. So um, that's kind of why they wanted to do that. And then Josh Quick did a great job oh. of doing the uh, the the um, illustrations for the posters. So I love you. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, there's no finger wagging mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. any of this, which I think is is super smart mm -hmm. and very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. And where and where are we going to be seeing these? I can't even remember where I've seen them. Everywhere. You might have seen it in a bathroom. Uh, so they are up yeah. in uh, bar bathrooms, uh, some different restaurants here in town. Uh, you can also find them online, again, at our website um, and on our Facebook and Instagram page. Terrific. Congratulations on being chosen. Thank you. Now, you have also talked about maybe discussing a little bit some what you were calling consent scenarios. So people have some idea of, of what we're talking about when, when mm -hmm. we talk about consent in the process of being with someone. Yeah. Now, let Leah take it away. Yeah, so um, I'm going to read off a scenario, and then I thought maybe we could discuss what we would do in that situation. That's a great idea. Great. Uh, so, Sam and Charlie went to listen to their favorite band at the VFW. The evening is getting later, and they have been dancing close together all night. Charlie turns to face Sam and smiles. Sam pulls Charlie in and begins to kiss Charlie. So, what I want you to think about is, if you were Sam, how would you be able to tell if Charlie consents to being kissed? Good so. point. Yeah. Yeah, and so when we think about scenarios like this, right, we want to look for um, cues that show you whether or not someone is agreeing or not. So in this scenario, for instance, we have um, Charlie who's turning and smiling, mm -hmm. which looks inviting. Um, but also, it doesn't necessarily mean that Charlie is saying, yeah, I want to make out with you right, right. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, what would be a way for, uh, what would be a way for Sam to more directly let Charlie know that was okay? Mm -hmm. Or for Charlie to find out, does that smile mean, I mm -hmm. want to kiss you? Or does that smile just mean, I'm having fun? Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I think that um, part of a part of it is really checking in with that person and it being just a natural part of communication. Like, mm -hmm. you know, are you okay with this? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things though that um, w we especially focus on too is thinking about, okay, so maybe they're at the BFW, are they drinking? And how does that kind of play in right. with that situation as well? Yeah. Do you want to give us an, another, another example? One? Yeah, great. So I will take a turn reading one. Peyton and Jess are making out. Jess took off Peyton's shirt. Peyton moved closer, pulling up Jess's shirt in response. Jess then starts moving their hands underneath Peyton's waistband. So th the thing to think about, uh, if you were Jess, how might you know that Peyton is willing to go do things below the waist? <laughs> And again, I mean, it seems I, I'm responding as someone who has not dated for I hundred <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but it seems to me that the clearest way to find out if that's okay is to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that while that might seem um, awkward or unusual the first time or two, it's, 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 it's like anything you do, it becomes much easier and you become much more comfortable doing it the more you do it. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a consent all-star. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, and I think too, you know, asking is the surest way you're ever going to know if someone uh, is wanting and willing to engage in any type of intimacy with you. Mm -hmm. um, in this scenario, one important thing to think about too is uh, is reciprocity. So here we have one person taking off a shirt and the other person agree like mm -hmm. agreeing through that physical exchange. If that's not happening, if one person is seeming far more undressed or dressed right. than another, that's a t point where you come in and you're like, hey, Leah, like, is it all right that I'm topless right yeah. now? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that 
that is a way to incorporate the language into the mood of undressing anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting to think about these things as adults as opposed to like when you're first starting out, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> when you're oh, starting yeah. out with Absolutely. <laughs> but you know, in some ways it seems to me that the approach that we're taking now um, take so much pressure off people in many mm -hmm. ways. In the old days, you were expected to read someone's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on people on both sides to to just feel like they should know what the other person wants. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're not mind readers, and we don't know. And I think on both sides, some people felt pressured to do things that they weren't that comfortable with because no one asked, and they didn't want to be the one to jump in and say no. And people didn't ask because they thought that would make them look incompetent or in, mm -hmm. in not mm -hmm. in control. So, I mean, mm -hmm. this, this takes all that away. Yeah. yeah. And I think branching off that, right, like if you are wanting to have great sex, if you're wanting to like have really awesome intimacy, like you want your partner to want what's going on and you want yeah. to be able to have what you want to happen, happen. Uh, and it's not as though you can telepathically send signals uh, and so speaking and asking and conveying those wishes uh, is the surest way to have the great sex. Right. Mm -hmm. And talking can be very sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm keeping a good eye on my watch. We have five minutes and are we going to play that? Do we want time to play that PSA, Scott? Yeah, I think they would like us to. No, and that's like a 30 second thing. So okay. we so we probably have time for uh, one or two other scenarios. Just okay. other examples of the situations you might find yourselves in. Oh, yeah. Not me, okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dylan and Logan were texting uh, earlier this week about wanting to have sex together. They meet up at Logan's house, uh, start making out and undressing. Dylan moves their mouth to Logan's genitals. So if you were Dylan, how would you know that Logan wants you to perform oral sex? So, mm -hmm. so again, um, are there cues physically besides mm -hmm. just verbal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, like there's, there's so much more that can be happening in this experience. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to think about too is the way that sex can mean different things for different people. Uh, same with the word like hookup. Mm -hmm. um, so, hey, do you want to hook up later tonight? I can agree and think we're just going to be kissing, um, but someone else might think uh, maybe there's going to be uh, some hands doing some stuff, right? But, but if we're not clarifying what a hookup means or what sex means, um, then that consent, that those questions we're asking are not clear enough um, for us to, to be having the conversations. Right. Like and hookup used to mean in the <laughs> dark ages just meeting somebody to right. to, oh, yeah. to, to meet yeah. up. It was my teenagers had to clear clue me in that I could no longer say that. Oh <laughs> yes. yes. So I mean it, literally there are different definitions that change over mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. Awesome. Do we have one more? Yeah, we have one more for you. So Jamie and Taylor are kissing when Taylor starts tugging on Jamie's shirt, saying, I want you to take this off. Jamie laughs and takes off their shirt and Taylor's shirt. Jamie then starts to play with Taylor's waistband. Can I take these off as well? Taylor responds, yes, please, but then I don't want to go much further. That's all right. I just love being close to your body. So in comparison to all the other scenarios we've done today, um, does it feel like both partners are consenting to what's going on? That seemed like pretty clear mm -hmm. and very natural, mm -hmm. not, you know, stilted or awkward at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the way it can be, the way it usually is when we incorporate affirmative consent into our daily lives. I think that was really helpful just to kind of walk through some of the things, some of the situations where, you know, consent can be um, can be solicited and you know mm -hmm. and checked in on um, in in young people's lives. So mm -hmm. thank awesome. you so much. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Now it is all of April again is uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, there's information on the Make a Move website. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yep. Anything else that people should know before we go? <sighs> 
Great sex begins with a yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And go to all the public restaurants in town and try to find those clever ads because yes. they're really great. They're really wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming yes, on yeah. and walking us through all this. I found it really interesting. Um, and I will now say thank you to all of you. We will be back in two weeks. I believe that's April 30th. And Joel will be back. So for all the Joel fans out there, um, he'll be back with us in two weeks. Thank you very much from Missoula Community Access Television. I'm Kim Anderson. Have a good week.